Hello, my name is Lee Brown and I'm a curriculum and training specialist for the Explorer program at BioRad Laboratories. Today I'm going to be showing you BioRad's out of the blue CRISPR gene editing lab. If your students have already mastered bacterial transformation and they're ready for some cutting edge techniques, this CRISPR lab is a great addition for your classroom. For more information about this lab or for any questions about the BioRad Explorer program, please email us at explorer at biorad.com and check out the links in the description. If you're not already familiar with CRISPR-Cas9, you'll want to take a look at our CRISPR Explain video, which is linked in the description below. That video gives a great overview of CRISPR applications, how Cas9 works, and even describes how to use the free CRISPR paper model that comes with the out of the blue CRISPR kit. For this video, I'll assume you understand bacterial transformation. If you need a refresher on that technique, there's a link in the description to BioRad's bacterial transformation how-to video. Let's start off with some background information on LACC and blue white screening. Then we'll make sure you're up to speed on CRISPR-Cas9 gene editing and discuss how it's used in this lab. Finally, I'll walk you through the out of the blue CRISPR gene editing lab activity. In this lab, students use CRISPR technology to edit the chromosome of E. coli. Let's start off by looking at something you're probably already familiar with. Normally, E. coli forms creamy white colonies that look like the ones that you see here. E. coli have a gene in their chromosome called LACZ, which codes for an enzyme called beta-galactosidase, or beta-gal. Beta-gal normally breaks down lactose, but it can also break down a substrate called X-gal, which is colorless. When x is broken down, it produces a blue color. So, bacteria with a functional LACZ gene will be blue when they're grown on media that contains x -gal. On this plate, we see bacteria that are expressing LACZ, so the colonies are blue. Now, what happens if LACZ isn't functional? Bacteria without a functioning LACZ gene don't make beta-gal, so they can't break down x -gal and the blue pigment isn't made. When these bacteria are grown on plates with x -gal, the colonies are white. We can think of LACZ as a model for any other gene that scientists may want to modify. Scientists can modify genes by deleting, inserting, or replacing a sequence. By using CRISPR, they can target and edit specific genes. In this lab, students will start with a functional LACZ gene and use CRISPR to cut and edit the DNA so that it's non-functional. Okay, time for a quick refresher. We often focus on how CRISPR technology is used to cut DNA, but CRISPR gene editing involves two broad steps, cut and repair. First, Cas9 and the guide RNA form a complex. Together, they find the target DNA based on the guiding nucleotide sequence of the RNA. The DNA unwinds, and the complementary sequence binds to the guide RNA. Then Cas9 makes a double-stranded break, cutting the DNA. What happens when bacteria have a double-stranded break in their chromosome? Well, if they don't repair the cut, it's lethal. So bacteria have evolved ways to fix breaks in their DNA so that they don't die. Now, let's take a look at that repair process. Here we have our target DNA, which has been cut. Bacteria can use a process called homology-directed repair to fix the double-stranded break. In this process, donor DNA is patched into the cut using bacterial repair machinery. The donor DNA has what are called homology arms, which are sequences that match parts of the destination DNA. The homology arms help the donor line up correctly. So, to sum up, we need four components for CRISPR gene editing. Cas9, the guide RNA, donor DNA, and the repair machinery. Remember, in this lab, we're starting off with E. coli that have a functioning LACZ gene. We'll use CRISPR-Cas9 to cut the DNA and then repair the break by inserting donor DNA. We've engineered this particular donor DNA with a stop code on. When this piece of DNA is inserted into the cut LACZ gene, translation will stop early and LACZ will no longer function correctly. Remember, the purpose of this lab is for students to use CRISPR gene editing to edit the LACZ gene so that it is no longer functional. 
they'll be starting off with blue bacteria, which have a functional LAC-Z gene. After the bacteria are edited, the LAC-Z gene in the chromosome will no longer function and it will be passed on to all daughter bacteria. Without a functional LAC-Z gene, the bacteria are white even when grown with XGAL. Now that we're done with the refreshers, let's talk about the lab protocol. The procedure takes a little over an hour, but there's a stopping point if you have shorter class periods. Each student group will do four different bacterial transformations, plate them on plates containing XGAL, and then incubate overnight. We've already mentioned the four components that you need to edit DNA, Cas9, a guide RNA, a donor DNA, and the bacterial repair machinery. Let's take a look at where each of those components fit into this lab. First of all, we need Cas9. In this lab, the E. coli that we're using have been engineered to continuously express Cas9. We also need the repair machinery proteins. We've put the genes for the repair machinery proteins under the control of an arabinose promoter. When starter bacteria are grown on media with arabinose, the repair machinery proteins are made. Without arabinose, the repair machinery is not made. We'll be using bacteria from each type of starter plate so students can see what happens with and without the repair machinery. We will supply the bacteria with the other two components that we need, the guide RNA and the donor DNA. That's part of the power of CRISPR. We get to provide the instructions for where to cut and how to repair. We're going to add the guide RNA and donor DNA by transforming our bacteria with two different plasmids, PD for plasmid donor and PDG for plasmid donor guide. Both of these plasmids have the donor DNA sequence. PDG also has the DNA that encodes for the guide RNA. PD does not, and so bacteria transformed with PD will not be able to make the guide RNA. Now, let's take a look at what happens once we have all the components we need. Remember, in order to edit the target LAC-Z gene, we'll cut within LAC-Z and then repair that cut with the donor DNA. The bacteria from our starter plate are already expressing Cas9. Once we add the PDG plasmid, the bacteria will make the guide RNA. Now the Cas9 guide RNA complex can find our target LAC-Z DNA in the chromosome, unwind it, and make the cut. Let's look at the repair side. Here's our cut DNA. We get the donor DNA with the stop code on from our PDG plasmid. The bacteria have repair machinery proteins since they were grown on plates with arabinose. That repair machinery can patch the donor DNA into the cut and make the repair. Remember, the donor DNA has a stop code on, so once it's inserted into LAC-Z, LAC-Z no longer functions correctly. We just talked about what happens when we introduce all the components we need in order to edit genes with CRISPR-Cas9. But how do we know that we did CRISPR? Well, we can control for some of the components we put in and see what happens when we don't add them. In this lab, all of the bacteria have Cas9, and we're adding donor DNA to all of our samples since that sequence is on both plasmids. We can control for the guide RNA by transforming with either the PDG plasmid, which has the DNA sequence for the guide RNA, or the PD plasmid, which does not have this sequence. And we can control for the repair machinery by transforming bacteria that were grown with arabinose, so the repair machinery is turned on, or without arabinose, so the repair machinery is turned off. You may want to pause the video here and think about what phenotypes you would expect to see on each of these transformation samples. Here's three of the phenotypes that you're likely to see in the lab. No bacterial colonies, white colonies, and blue colonies. We don't want to give away all the answers in this video, but take some time to think about which phenotype you'd expect to see for each of the samples that we explained before. What happens when DNA within LAC-Z is cut and repaired with a stop code on? What if it's cut but not repaired? What if it isn't ever cut? Okay, let's get started with the lab. 
You'll need to pour bacterial plates at least three days before the student lab. The starter plates need to be streaked at least 24 hours before the lab. You can find detailed prep directions at biorad.com slash out of the blue. It's also linked in the description below. We occasionally release updates to our instructions, so be sure to check for the latest version before preparing the lab. Here's what you'll need for the lab. A permanent marker, four empty two mil tubes, two plasmids, PD and PDG, LB nutrient broth, a container for trash, a container with ice or ice water, transformation solution kept on ice, two starter plates with and without arabinose, labeled X era and X, four experimental plates labeled X SPT. These have spectinomycin to select for transformed bacteria. Loops, a P20, P200, and P1000 pipette and tips, lab tape, a water bath or dry bath set to 60 degrees Celsius, and an incubator set to 37 degrees Celsius. First, label four tubes A, B, C, and D, and put them on ice. For the best results, be sure to keep your tubes on ice anytime you aren't working with them. Add 250 microliters of cold transformation solution to each tube, and then put the tubes back on ice. Use a loop to take five colonies from your X starter plate without arabinose and add them to your A tube. Swirl your loop for about a minute so you can disperse the bacteria in the transformation solution. Look at your loop every once in a while to make sure you don't see clumps of bacteria. If you do, give it another swirl. Put the tube back on ice. Do the same thing for tube B. Use a new loop and take five colonies from your starter plate without arabinose. Add the colonies to tube B and swirl your loop around to break up any clumps. Once the bacteria are dispersed, put the tube back on ice. Now switch over to the X era starter plate with arabinose. Use a new loop to pick five colonies from this plate and put into the C tube. Swirl your loop around in the transformation solution and make sure you get all the bacteria off your loop. Put the tube back on ice once you're done. Use a new loop and take five more colonies off this plate and add to your D tube. Swirl the loop around to disperse the bacteria into the transformation solution and put the tube back on ice when you're done. Now it's time to add our different plasmids. Remember, we'll be adding one of each plasmid to the bacteria from each starter plate. We'll start with the PD plasmid, which we'll add to tubes A and C. Set your micropipette to 10 microliters and add a tip. Add 10 microliters of the PD plasmid to the A tube. Flick the tube a few times to mix and put it back on ice. Change tips. Add 
and add 10 microliters of PD to the C tube. Pipe it up and down or flick, to, flick the tube to mix and then put the tube back on ice. Next, we'll add the PDG plasmid to tubes B and D. Add a new tip and add 10 microliters of the PDG plasmid to the B tube. Flick to mix and put it back on ice. Change tips and add 10 microliters of PDG to the D tube. Mix and put D back on ice. Incubate all the tubes on ice for at least 10 minutes. This step is really important. Now it's time for the heat shock. I'm using a dry bath with a bit of water in each of the wells. Take your tubes on ice over to the dry bath or water bath and have your timer set for 50 seconds. Transfer all four tubes to the dry bath for exactly 50 seconds and then put them back on ice immediately. Let the tubes cool on ice for at least two minutes. Take your tubes out of the ice bath and add 250 microliters of LB to each one. Let them sit at room temperature to recover for at least 20 minutes. This can be a stopping point if you have shorter class periods. Just leave the tubes at room temperature overnight and pick back up the next day. While your bacteria is chilling on ice, label your four XSPT plates A, B, C, and D. You can also add the date and your lab group's initials or group number. Set your P200 pipette to 100 microliters and put on a tip. Flick the A tube a few times, then transfer 100 microliters to the A plate. Discard the tip. Use a new loop to spread the liquid evenly all over the plate, and then discard the loop when you're done. Repeat this process for samples B, C, and D using a new pipette tip and a new loop each time. Stack your plates and tape them together. Flip the stack over and incubate them upside down. If you have a 37 degree incubator, incubate them for 24 hours. If you don't have a 37 degree incubator, you can leave them at room temperature for three days. In either case, be sure they're in the dark since XGAL is light sensitive. Keep your incubator in a dark room or drape some foil over them on the counter. Or you can loosely wrap the stacks in foil but not too tight so that you don't suffocate them. After a day at 37 degrees or three days at room temperature, take a look at your plates. Do you see colonies? 
What color are they? If you don't see any blue colonies, put the plates in the fridge for up to five days and then check again. We don't want to give away the lab results, but here are some of the phenotypes that you might see after the lab. No colonies, white colonies, and blue colonies. What would you expect to see if the DNA within LAXE is cut and repaired with a stop code on? What if it's cut and not repaired? What if it isn't ever cut? Think about which of these you'd expect to see for each of your plates. The Out of the Blue CRISPR kit is now available and it includes the plastic consumables, all the reagents, and the growth media including the LB auger powder and a capsule to make the LB broth. The Out of the Blue CRISPR refill pack is also available, which includes only the necessary reagents. Note that this refill does not include the growth media. To learn more, visit biorad.com slash out of the blue. Anytime you edit a gene, it's very important to genotype the organism to make sure you made the edit you intended. The Out of the Blue Genotyping Extension Kit lets your students extract DNA from the bacteria colonies from the CRISPR activity and then use PCR to genotype the LACZ gene. This is a great way to have your students confirm that they actually did gene editing. For more information, visit biorad.com slash out of the blue.